Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lords Group Trading PLC Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged. They can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab that's just situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Please just simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company can review all questions submitted today and will publish those responses where it's appropriate to do so on the Investor Meet company platform. Uh, before we begin, I would like to submit the following poll. And if you could give that your kind attention, I'm sure the company would be most grateful. And I would now like to hand you over to the executive management team from Lords Group Trading. Uh, Shankar, Chris, good morning. Good morning, and uh, thank you everybody for joining us this morning on our full year 23 trading update. Um, presenting will be myself, Shank Patel, I'm the CEO of the business, and Chris Day, who is our CFO and COO. The, the starting point is reiterating the Lord's investment case. Um, we are a leading high growth distributor of building materials in the UK. We have six very strong um, uh, sections or pillars to our proposition. We are very focused on, on customers and we have a unique customer first proposition. You see on the left hand side some bullet points highlighting what this, this these are. And in particular, I'd like to, to sort of focus everyone again on, on the engaged colleagues uh, bullet point. We have fantastic colleagues who are very highly engaged and they are fundamental to our differentiated customer service proposition and you can see that from the robustness and the resilience of of our results in the in the next box to the right um, our successful value creative m a history again bullet points that highlight what we've done and where the opportunity exists in our market and once again i'd like to reiterate to to, to everyone on this call, that we've made 15 acquisitions in the last five years, delivering a 20 plus return on investment. And the, the other point to make is that we have a, a long track record of discipline and making sure that the businesses that we buy are earnings accretive. When I move over to the middle section on the left hand side, talking more about our organic and margin accretive growth opportunities. You see, we have an opportunity to, to roll out into new markets and customers via existing brands and new stores. We had opened new stores last year and we've increased the locations of our businesses by, by a number of, uh, by seven in 2023. Um, we're also very good at increasing the share of customer wallet through marketing of new products and renewables is, is a point in case over the last few years we've also entered into the roofing space and again um, those are, are real examples of how we've been increasing our share of customer wallet but the great opportunity now but that's presenting itself to us is the growing penetration of decarbonate decarbonization products and that will drive margin expansion um, the clean heat market mechanism which has been placed by the government into the heat and boiling industry boiler industry sorry um, we are very well placed to take advantage of that we have the infrastructure we have the colleagues and we have the supply um, connections with our with our manufacturers who make those products in the middle right hand side our financial profile uh, again once again we iterate that we're on track to deliver our 2024 target of 500 million revenue um, we have growth levers that will will help us and, and we'll make sure that we reach our seven and a half percent EBITDA margin. And we are highly cash generative with a, prog a progressive dividend policy. On the left hand side, the positioning of the market, which is which is very big at 55 billion addressable, and we are still very small at less than 1%. Um, our resilience is also because of the 45% of our revenue in the essential and uh, repair sector of RMI. Um, and our track record is of, of high growth. Over a five-year period, we have a revenue CAGR of 50.7%. And finally, on this slide, I'd like to just highlight that the, the uh, business is recognized as an industry leader, and it's aligned with shareholders via significant majority shareholding of, of the management, um, primarily myself as a CEO. And I've led this business through previous downturns, in particular, three previous downturns. In terms of the financial highlights um, for 2023, the trading is in line with current market expectations, and that this demonstrates the group's resilience in delivering its growth strategy. The full year 23 revenues are 463 million um, against 450 million in 2022. And that demonstrates our ability to deliver in more challenging market conditions. 
think the market conditions and the challenges have been widely widely known. Our, our, our competitors have, have also called the same out. Um, and therefore, we think our performance has been highly resilient in, in, in this particular market downturn. The adjusted EBITDA will be not less than 26.6 million, which is a step down from um, FY22. And the other um, success that we've had is in reducing our debt um, from 38 million at half year in June 2023 to 28.5, which is at the lower end of market expectations. And that sort of reflects the successful management controls and initiatives that we've put in place. The point that we want to make is that um, our net position is offset by a 15 million pound um, uh, market value of freehold properties that we hold on our on, on our books and in our locations. This is important because we see um, freeholds as a means of mitigating increasing rents, and it's part of a a, a business strategy to ensure that we mitigate our our, our rental in, um, risks. And as I said earlier, we've added seven new locations to the network in in full year twenty three, and these are in really good markets, um, which allow us organic opportunities and we've delivered them through organic and acquisition um, strategies. I'll hand over to Chris on this slide to just talk a bit more on the details of the numbers. Sure, thank you, Shankar. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so as Shankar said, total revenue of 463 million. Um, that represents a 2.8% uh, total growth uh, over FY22, which totaled 450 million. Um, and on a like-for-like -like basis, a, a modest step back at 1.2%. I think the growth overall is is reflective of uh, the, the value proposition Shank has just been through um, and really kind of sets that Lord's differentiation uh, with regards to the focus on service and also the diversified end markets that we operate in. Um, and the delta that you can see, the 4% delta between the like-for-like -like revenue and the total revenue, Re represents the consolidation opportunity that the group has with still less than 1% market share. Merchanting delivered 215 million, um, you know, very much reflective of the macro conditions, but I think also uh, our divisional teams have focused on, on margin attainment and customer relationships. And, and so, um, you know, for us, the focus is the 2.4 uh, step back, which we think fares very well against the market. In terms of plumbing and heating, I think it absolutely takes the honours for, for FY23 um, revenue at 248 million, uh, total growth of 7.8%, light for light growth of 3.7%. Um, and the division provides the group with a really kind of strong core slice of highly resilient revenue in that plumbing and heating space. My, my challenge to anyone when we talk about plumbing and heating is, you know, name me a house or a household that doesn't have heating and hot water. The, the market is robust, it's resilient. Um, and and it's well placed to deliver growth over the over the medium term through the fundamentals that Shankar spoke about in terms of decarbonising the UK housing stock. Okay, move over to the next slide. Um, Chris just mentioned the decarbonisation of the UK housing stock, and just wanted to to mention the renewables and the fact that in our business we've seen a sixty percent sales growth in full year twenty three. Um, it's it's widely known that the government have um, have put in an initiative to drive air source heat pump um, transition by a mechanism called the clean heat market mechanism. That's commenced from Q2 2024. And, and these incentives are in place for manufacturers and consumers to stimulate the decarbonisation of the UK housing stock. We are very well placed and I would say uniquely placed to supply via our B2B and B2C channels. We have the infrastructure, we have the colleague expertise, and we will in due course have the stock um, for, 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 for this growing market and for our, our ability to, to make sure that we, we, um, we prosper as this, um, as this market takes off. The, the market has, for, for us, the, the, the market is, is supplied through six air sort heat pump agreements that we are now have in place with established brands and manufacturers. Um, and the product products are margin accretive, and they are delivered via an in in house existing network, which 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 is the infrastructure that we have in the plumbing and heating division. We also reiterate our customer first proposition. Um, the business prospers because of our engaged colleagues, and they deliver an industry leading service, um, developing loyalty and trust with our customers. 
this is recognized through the fee for platinum accreditation that we've got and we're recognized for our superior service this year we were we were um, encouraged by the Builders Merchant Award that, that we received and the fact that um, we also received the Branch Manager of the Year Award for, for one of our colleagues, Raina, in, in our Beaconsfield um, uh, depot. The, the business also has local and re regional leadership by highly recognisable brands offering a multi-channel online, offline experience. That's a big part of our strategy that we would like to trade with our customers how they want to trade with us, which is via, via our depots, on uh, by, via email, or really just online. Whichever way our customers want to trade with us, we want to make sure that we can trade with them and give them a seamless, consistent experience across all of these channels. The customer's reference um, you know, greater levels of trust and relationship with our laws builders merchants brands versus our national peers and we commissioned some external market research and that has has indicated that laws builders merchants outperforms versus the five nationally recognized merchant brands and ultimately all of this results in long-term customer relationships and this has uh, underpinned our growth and our market share opportunity um, our CAGA over the last seven years is 25 percent in revenue growth so to the outlook, um, as far as we, we see, the fundamentals of the Lord's investment proposition remains. Um, we are on track to deliver IPO commitments. We have an experienced management team and an agile divisional structure that allows us to seize opportunities in challenging markets. This is something that we've continuously done over the last 30 years, and we are well placed to continue to do so. We have significant um, organic growth levers with new sites and extended product range, including renewables acceleration. And our consolidation strategy remains highly relevant. We are prudent in our execution in the sh short term until market dynamics improve. We've always maintained discipline in, in acquiring businesses, and we don't intend to change that anytime soon. And we are exceptionally well positioned for growth as the market conditions improve. We are seeing some early signs of that, and we believe that we will we will benefit as the market grows heading into later part of 2024 and 2025. Um, I will finish with the same comment as, as previously mentioned on several occasions. We, Lords, remains less than 1% of a £55 billion addressable market. Thank you very much. Perfect. Shanko, Chris, if I may just jump back in there. Thank you very much indeed for your presentation this morning. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions just by using the Q&A tab that's situated on the top right hand corner of your screen. Uh, but just while the team take a few moments to review those questions that were submitted already, I would like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Um, Chris, Shanko, obviously we did receive a number of pre-submitted questions ahead of today's event. And as you can see there in the Q&A tab as well, we've received a number of questions uh, throughout your presentation this morning. Um, so Chris, Shankar, if I may just hand back to you just to read out those questions um, and give your responses where it's appropriate to do so, and then I'll pick up from you at the end. Thank you. Okay, Excellent. thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Um, right, we had a number of pre-submitted questions, so I think Shankar, let's, let's go through those first and then uh, give people time to to put some questions in live. Um, first one, uh, you talk about organic growth. Could you give a little more detail on what the levers are? Okay, so the following strategic growth initiatives. Um, we've got new branch openings to expand our geographical presence and access new customers. We've um, previously mentioned that Mr. Central Heating and George Lyons are two uh, particular brands where we see great opportunities. We've got product range extension to enhance our customer proposition. That's enabling a greater share of customer wallet. Again, we've demonstrated that over the last few years and we'll continue to do so. Um, we've got digital expansion via our in-house team and that generates more customers and an enhanced customer experience. So we're uniquely placed by having an online and offline proposition. Um, online customers then get converted into offline customers in due course. And we have a, a, a long customer life cycle because the brands are very well recognized once people shop with us and have that exceptional customer experience. And then we've got the acquisitions on a, on a, on a multiple that are creative and they add geography and product range extensions. Okay, thank you. Uh, next one, we'd like to hear more about the renewables opportunity and the clean heat market mechanism. Okay, so 
So the government's clean hit market mechanism is a is an initiative that is designed to accelerate the green shift of um, boiler manufacturers and consumers from fossil fuel based boilers that mainly you know um, that that have been the mainstay of the UK heat, heating solution to the installation of heat pumps. Um, now the the mechanism is due to be effective from April 2024. Um, and the way it works is that boiler manufacturers need to generate 4% of their boiler unit sales from heat pumps in FY24-25. Or they can buy a certain amount of credits to help them get there. And it's been enforced through a mechanism that fines them £3,000 for each missed credit. And therefore, boiler manufacturers such as Worcester Bosch have said that this additional cost will be passed through to the client at around... Uh, between between sort of 95 for some manufacturers of 250 pounds per boilers. And we are strategically shifting into this space in recent years. We, we, we've made significant investments um, in this and we're offering a wide range of the leading heat pumps across our branches. So equally the increased price of boilers will benefit the group's top line. Um, and as, as we stated earlier, the renewables um, uh, sector received 60% sales growth in our business in full year 2023, and that demonstrates the, the, the growth potential. Thank you. Um, right, next question. What assurance is there for loyal shareholders that uh, the business will grow, providing shareholder with improved investment returns? Um, perhaps I'll take that one, Shankar. Um, sure. Uh, the strength, so I think the strength of the Lord's investment case absolutely remains, you know, I think we, I think we communicated it clearly at IPO, Shankar's uh, taking you through it in the, again in the, in the first slide of today's presentation. We're a leading high growth distributor in the UK um, and there's, there's a clear opportunity around organic growth and, and that strategy is, is, is well outlined, um, combined um, with significant, significant margin accretive M&A opportunity and I think there's a, there's a real track record there of, of acquiring um, a, a good multiples. We talked about a four to six times range uh, of EBIT, maintainable EBITDA. Um, post IPO, we've acquired a, an average of 4.8 times maintainable EBITDA. So kind of comfortably within within that range. Um, clearly, there's there's been an impact um, from a subdued market this year and, and, uh, and last year. Um, but we've no doubt that um, while the market may remain soft for an FY24, our track record of beating the market is is well proven. And, and I think Shankar, as a CEO, CEO, has led the business through uh, many challenging periods before over over his tenure. Um, and, and so I think we've got a top quality investment case and, and an ambitious and skilled management team that can keep delivering in in, in this market. Okay. okay. Thank you, Chris. Um, I'll allow you to take the next one. Uh, yeah. Questions, uh, uh, just rephrase this slightly. Um, uh, we're seeking clarity on Christo's departure if this will have any short term impact on the business. Okay. So I think uh, to, to, to be clear, um, Chris received what he considered to be an exceptional offer in a different segment of our industry. Uh, and we wish him well. We have worked very closely together for the last seven years and have nothing but admiration for our relationship as, as partners and for the um, uh, for the input of Chris into, into the business and his assistance. Um, but we, we have a formal process to identify and appoint a new CFO, and that had begun um, already and is now at an advanced uh, stage. As for the short-term impact, you know, we, we have a strong finance function, both centrally and divisionally. And the, these teams are more than capable of running the day-to-day -day accounting functions. And we would hope that the new incoming CFO will experience a direct handover, as well as being supported by the existing teams. Cool. Thanks, Shank. Uh, next one. Looking ahead, what can we expect from 2024 in terms of performance? So it also has delivered considerable organic and inorganic growth since IPO. And as we continue to expand the business and take market share through attracting new customers, a greater share of existing customer wallet, product range extension, new geographies, digital capabilities, and value added acquisitions. And as stated in the trading update, you know, full year trading is ex expected to remain subdued in line with all of our peers and the and well known in that the sector is, is, um, is, is going to remain subdued. But there are some signs of improvement in customer demand. 
And these signal, whilst these signals remain in, in intermittent and, and there is price deflation that persists, we revert um, back to what we always do, which is in, in tough markets, we are always outperforming. And that's that, that's how we've run our business. Um, and that's how we'll continue to, to run our business. Okay. Uh, what are the plans for expansion and diversification? So if we had like that outline today, we, we've successfully ex executed 15 acquisitions in the last five years alone, delivering a 20% return on investment. And we've built this reputation as an acquirer of choice, you know, position us, uh, ourselves strongly in a highly fragmented independent merchant market. Now that said, we maintain a prudent and considered approach to inorganic growth. And whilst a pipeline of acquisition opportunities remain live. In the current environment, the group is committed to balance sheet discipline, which will remain in full year 2024. Um, right throughout from IPO, we've always maintained discipline and we, 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 we will continue to do so. Um, we've had a few questions on debt, uh, including how do you see a decrease in interest rates impacting Lord's interest expense? Um, so maybe I'll take this one. Uh, we've reported uh, net debt below market expectations today at 28.5 million. Um, Shank has also explained how that's backed up by um, a substantial freehold property portfolio uh, with an anticipated market value of not less than 15 million. Uh, the net debt reduction is primarily driven by management controls and, and uh, efforts around working capital um, and reflects, as I said, a, a reduction ahead of market expectations. So I think I think we're kind of really pleased with with the position uh, that takes us to the, the group is uh, cash generative. Um, there's another slightly related question around covenants. Um, you know, I think simply we have substantial cash headroom. We refinanced our facilities in April 2023, um, and, and you could refer to that RNS and um, and see the details there. But it's substantial headroom. Thank you, Chris. We've got. Uh, Question on Alloway Timber? Yeah. Um, so with Alloway Timber, uh, you've bought a negative EBITDA business. Is this a shift from your M&A strategy by, by buying turnaround targets? Why are you confident that you can turn it around? What is the story here? Um, Come on. Would you like to take that? Why don't I take the first half in, in terms okay. of kind of track record and then if you want to take the turnaround. Um, so the, the strategy um, is to acquire businesses that can deliver a maintainable EBITDA position. And so you heard me earlier talk about a four to six times range. So that, that is a view uh, effectively driven by, by Shankar and myself of what can this business do maintainably in the future. Um, and that needs to be within four to six times multiple. We've got, if you look back at our history, there's a track record of acquiring loss-making businesses and quickly improving performance. I'd, I'd refer you back, um, if you reference our full year 22 results presentation that's available on the website, in there we showed a, a whole tranche of um, transactions over the last, I think it was 2016 to 2022. And, and within that, we specifically called out two loss-making transactions that we'd, that we'd acquired at the time, loss-making at the time, that subsequently have gone on to deliver 2.4 million of incremental EBITDA from, from the moment we acquired them to, to FY22. We believe that LOA is a transaction that's an extremely strong fit. Um, it fits really, really well with our core merchanting business and expands our network into the prominent South London market that we've, that we've long uh, sought and desired. Great. Thank you, Chris. Um, any more questions that have come through? Do you just want to, Shanky, just cover in terms of the, the turnaround in, in terms of how? Uh, yes, well, I mean, the the, um, the the turnaround of the business is 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 well in place. You know, it's got great locations in South London. It's a complementary fit to our existing locations in, in and around West London. Um, so what we'll, what we'll see is as we take over active management, of this business as we have taken out the management of this business will focus that business on what lords is really good at which is excellent customer service investing in our in our plant and, and, and property and and also in making sure that um the customer uh, uh proposition is consistent with the other lords branches and we've done that repeatedly with several businesses you've called out um in the, in the past thanks 
Right, let's go to uh, the live question. So Andy M, um, group target of 500 million of revenue. How reliant are you on M&A to hit this target? How would you feel if you missed the target because you decided that a particular deal was overpriced or perhaps not really the right fit? How reliant are we on M&A to hit this target? Um, I think where, where, where we are at the moment, if you look at our, our numbers for, for year 20. Um, 23 we're at 463 million I think we've given um, guidance now to to the market of what we expect in for year 2024 and and I, and I don't think we're reliant to to just um, uh, getting there via m a um, we've all, always maintained discipline we will only buy businesses if they're a good fit we have a criteria which is quite exhaustive that criteria has been built up over number of years and number of deals over the last five years in particular um, so, so we're, we're not um, we're not going to be in a position that if we missed the the, the, the target um, because a deal was overpriced, that it would that would it would it would affect us. It, that's you know to to hit the target just to because there's a deal that allows us to hit the target. I don't think is discipline, um, and the group prides itself on on having rigorous discipline. Um, but at the same time, I reiterate the group is also um, also has a history of growth. So. Um, you know, we're quite confident of being able to to meet that target. Thanks. Okay, a question from Ian S. With the emphasis on balance sheet discipline, how do you plan to balance growth opportunities with financial prudence, especially in the context of M and A? Um, so I think I'd say in, look, we've, we've we've outlined a um, number of organic growth levers that are available to us, and, and they absolutely remain, in, and you can see that um, particularly in in FY twenty three through uh, plumbing and heating. Um, as Shankar said, in M&A, <clears throat> we're not going to we're not going to lunge to the 500 and make a poor decision. It's it's discipline. Um, but I think the other point I stress is we have an active pipeline of um, of opportunities and vendors that are highly engaged with lords and 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 kind of understand the benefit of transacting with lords. So um, that allows us to. Um, uh, to, to, to have time as our as our friend and, and not necessarily lose the opportunities. Thank you, Chris. Um, there's a question from Gavin L. What is the shareholder split, uh, management and investors? Um, so, it the, the the core management will be just above thirty two percent, and when you include the um, the, the consort party, which would include um, former uh, uh, executives, but part of the the, the, the family, um, it's just above fifty point five percent. Okay, uh, Colin C. How did Lords manage its inventory and supply chain in FY twenty three, especially considering global supply chain disruptions? What measures are in place to mitigate similar challenges in the future? So the the inventory and supply chain challenges are are always managed well because we have great relationships with our suppliers. This is a relationship based business, um, and in, in addition to the, the relationships, it, we, we've we've demonstrated great loyalty with our with our suppliers. Um, we work very closely with them. We're part of a buying group that also assists us in managing disruption, um, and we've got colleagues who are really good at what they do. Um, you know, we, we've had over the last three years considerable amount of disruption, and, and on each occasion, we've managed to, to to mitigate these, and and in many cases, we've managed to still grow our business without um, there being a long term impact. And the plumbing, heating, boiler supply shortages is a is a real example of you know um, a two to three months of severe disruption, yet we ended the year um, in in a, in a you know in, in, in growth. So, so you know, we're we're always acutely aware that in our industry, supply chain is is, is critical, and we've got lots of experience of of managing. But principally, it's because we have a very strong relationship with our with our supply chain partners, manufacturers, distributors, etc. Yeah. I, th I think the point to stress on the because um, you still hear commentary around the boiler supply problem that that was a isolated incident to FY22, um, completely normalised in, in FY23 and was effectively once in the, once in a thirty year event. Um, so um, you know I think that that was absolutely contained to FY22. Um, 
Andy, um, uh, a question on renewables. So uh, they grew by 60%, but what is the annualized revenue base of renewables? How significant could CHMM be for Lords? Um, so in terms of annualized revenue base, um, you, um, we've grown very quickly from from less than 1% uh, of plumbing and heating revenue uh, to an excess of 5% now over, over a matter of a uh, couple of years. Um, we see strong trajectory. Um, the clean heat market mechanism and the levy that uh, Shankar articulated, um, we're being prudent and, and we're not expecting to uh, be able to earn a margin on, on that levy, but clearly it will drive accelerated demand because we've now got incentivized manufacturers and incentivized uh, homeowners um, and it will drive a, drive a shift towards air source heat pumps, which is, I think Shankar explained earlier, higher value, higher margin products for us that, cannot, that can be fulfilled for our existing network. I've got a question from Dan T. Um, hello, can I ask if you have loyalty and retention schemes in place for trade customers? Um, yes, indeed, we do in our um, Lords Builders Merchants uh, and heavy brands, um, also incorporating um, advanced roofing. We have a, a, a loyalty scheme, which um, went live um, third quarter of, of, of last year. The early signs are very encouraging and we intend to continue investing in customer loyalty um, in that particular scheme. But the other way we, we really get loyalty is we are very close to our customers and especially the fact that the business empowers branch managers, empowers um, sales colleagues in our branches to really be, be close to their customer. And whilst that's not necessarily a, a scheme, but it's the very basis by which we operate, create really strong um, uh, relationships with our customers. And, and as a result, we, we get great loyalty from our customers. And that's evidenced again through, through the sales growth of our business. And again, in a challenging year in 2023, I think it demonstrates the customer loyalty that we have. And we should say, Dan, if you're in the trade, pop onto the Lords Builders Merchants website and you can uh, register for the loyalty scheme online. Good point, yeah. <laughs> uh, another one from Dan, actually. Uh, uh, also, can I ask who are the market share Maybe donors, shareholders? At, uh, market shareholders at present and why are they... In, oh, sorry, who, I think it's who are the market share leaders at present and why are they underperforming losing market share? So the, 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 the leaders are always going to be um, uh, the same that, has, that have been for, for a number of years. There's uh, the Travis Perkins group, um, there's um, Jusons, and there's um, Hughes Gray um, and, and, and Bill Bays. Um, now, I, I, you know, I can't comment on why they're underperforming. That's that's really not my, my place to, to do so. But what I can comment in, in terms of market share is the fact that um, our business has been displayed uh, because we have a decentralized model um, and, and I think that's one of the reasons why we will gain market shares is, is that we, we focus our business on the colleagues in the branches we don't have a a, um, a structure that inhibits colleagues from from really getting close to the customer and doing the best for the customer um, we're also demonstrating that, that our service proposition is so strong that actually we don't have to sacrifice margin in order to gain sales. Uh, the, the flip side of that is, of course, we need to constantly ensure that we're investing in our people, we're investing in our premises, we're investing in our plant. And that is something that we've consistently done and will continuously do so, especially in a downturn. We feel that we will gain market share because we will do the things that our competitors won't do, are either unable to do or unwilling to do. And, 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 and that's why we, we feel that our market share opportunity, gain opportunity always exists because of, of the model and the focus on, um, on succeeding through colleague engagement and keeping our customers happy. Okay, um, last one. Uh, Gavin, uh, what is the usual price you pay and how is the Putney branch performing? Um, so we, we, we've explained um, uh, that we took, we focus on a four to six times maintainable uh, EBITDA. And, and as I say, you go back to the FY22 presentation that's on our website and, and we outline a number of transactions and, and their kind of pre and post performance. So that's a really good, good slide to reference. Um, how's the branch performing? Um, 
I mean, Shank, do you want to describe the branch? I mean, it sounds like Gavin might know it, um, but it, it's quite unique <laughs> and it's got a, got a great opportunity. Yeah, so it, it, it's a unique, um, you know, uh, 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 densely, dense conurbation um, branch. It's uh, the traditional builders, merchants, um, railway arches, basically, but this one is now split in, in, in two. They're unfortunately not interconnected. So on the one side, on the right hand side, if you're looking at the branch, you've got the the timber side with, with, with arches um, stocking a massive and fantastic range of timber products. And on the left hand side, you've you, you travel about 10, 15 meters down the road and you've got the, the, the heavy side builders merchant side, which has got bricks, blocks, aggregates, etc. cetera. Um, it, it, it's really an iconic location, one that, that I know personally from years of living in London, uh, driving past it. It's in a fantastic catchment area um, and and it's got a tremendous opportunity because there is very little in terms of local competition. Um, our job is to is to invest in that business it, um, for a variety of reasons. It has been underinvested in our view, and and that's what we're doing. We will be investing in that business. There'll be a store refit. Um, there'll be investment in the, in the surfacing of the business. It's very important with, with, with trucks and forklifts. Um, that, that operate in these areas. We'll be investing in local marketing. I think the local marketing um, campaign has just been launched in and around South London, um, establishing our brand presence or, or trying to make sure that the um, customers in that area who may not have heard of us uh, are, are, are made aware of our locations and our, and our presence. So, so all in all, it's a very exciting year for, for those branches in South London, and in particular Putney. I was there just before Christmas, as I so always try and visit all of our branches um, before Christmas. And um, I can assure you the spirits were, were fantastic. Um, I had a, an architect um, who, who, who regularly goes to that um, location on the timber side, um, really, really pleased that Lords had taken over and was, was delighted with the way the business um, has, has looked after him. So we'll continue to do that. And I think the, the results will bear fruit um, as they've done every time we've applied this particular strategy of, of investment in our people and plant and premises. Shankar, Chris, if I may just jump back in there and thank you very much indeed for addressing all of those questions that came in uh, from investors this morning. And of course, if there are any further questions that do come through, we'll make these available to you immediately after the presentation has ended, uh, just for you to review um, to then add any additional responses, of course, where it's appropriate to do so. And we'll publish all those responses out on the platform. Um, but Shankar, perhaps before really just looking to redirect those on the call to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to yourself uh, and the company, if I could please just ask you for a few closing comments comments to wrap up with that would be great okay thank you very much um once again thank you to everyone um, for attending this um trading update uh, we are we have demonstrated resilience and robustness in our results um given a a tough market we're also confident that full year 2024 we will meet our our expectations um and i'd like to 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 re reiterate to it to, to everyone on this call. The business has been through a you know, significant number of downturns. Uh, it's been around for a very long period of time and our management is extremely skilled at managing these downturns and growing. And that's what we intend to do. We look forward to updating um, the stakeholders again in the future. Shankar, that's great. And Chris as well, thank you once again for updating investors this morning. Could I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the management team can really better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Lords Group Trading PLC, we would like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That now concludes today's session. So good morning to you all.